For years, SpaceX has promised us the moon. Literally. But now for the first time, it feels like they might actually mean it. In response to NASA's growing impatience and a mounting race against China, SpaceX has quietly unveiled a bold new vision, a simplified Starship mission that could send astronauts to the lunar surface sooner than anyone thought possible. They're calling it simplified, but make no mistake, this isn't a step back. It's a declaration of independence, a move to strip away decades of bureaucracy middlemen and outdated hardware. And here's the thing, SpaceX hasn't just come up with this overnight. They've been laying the groundwork for years, piece by piece, flight by flight, prototype by prototype. At the heart of it all is one defiant promise from Elon Musk himself. Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. Mark my words. So, how exactly does SpaceX plan to do the whole thing? Let's break it down. But how could this actually happen? First Starship with crew on board would launch from Earth and reach orbit. There it would rendezvous with a fuel depot, which is created by multiple Starship tanker vehicles. In general, this in-orbit refueling will happen as planned. Once fully fueled, Starship would ignite its engines and begin the journey to the moon. It would enter lunar orbit, then power down for a vertical descent landing directly on the moon's surface. The crew would step out and begin their surface operations living, working, and exploring in Starship's pressurized cabin for several days or even weeks. When it's time to come home, Starship would lift off from the lunar surface and return to Earth orbit. But here's the catch. The lunar version of Starship isn't built to survive re-entry. It has no heat shield, no wings, and adding them now would undo much of the progress already made. So instead, Starship would dock with another spacecraft already waiting in Earth orbit a Dragon capsule. Just as Dragon automatically docks with the International Space Station today, it would use its thrusters and sensors to make a precise connection with Starship. Once the two spacecraft are securely joined, astronauts would move through the docking tunnel into Dragon, ready for the final leg home. When the transfer is complete, Dragon detaches and begins its descent. Its heat shield endures the fiery re-entry parachutes deploy, and the capsule lands safely in the ocean, completing humanity's next great leap back to the moon. When you think about it, SpaceX already has most of what it needs to pull off a moon landing entirely on its own. What's currently a massive project spread across three major contractors could, in theory, be reduced to just one. The Dragon spacecraft, for instance, has already proven itself through dozens of crewed and cargo missions to the International Space Station. Its systems are mature, reliable, and ready. But for this new role, Dragon could be fine-tuned even further. Upgrades might include improved docking systems to connect seamlessly with Starship and enhanced life support to handle longer missions. The concept is surprisingly simple. Instead of relying on multiple spacecraft Orion Gateway and others, SpaceX just needs to use two of its vehicles, Dragon and Starship. In addition to launching the crew with Starship, they could launch a Dragon capsule first carrying the crew into Earth orbit. There, it would dock with Starship already waiting and fully fueled for the lunar journey. From that point forward, the two spacecraft would work together as a single integrated system. This approach isn't science fiction. SpaceX already has the hardware and much of the technology needed to make it happen. At the heart of this plan is docking technology. Starship's docking system is based on the same proven design used by Dragon 2, one that's been tested qualified and refined through years of NASA missions. It's built to connect securely with other spacecraft in orbit, including potentially Dragon itself. That means refueling crew transfer or even mixed spacecraft missions are all within reach. Launching Dragon to carry the crew, then having it link up with Starship in orbit, merges the best of both worlds. 
Dragon's reliability and operational heritage with Starship's heavy lift power and lunar landing capability. Dragon is already certified for human spaceflight to low Earth orbit. Starship, meanwhile, is being readied for deep space travel missions that go far beyond what any spacecraft has done since Apollo. It's a concept that also fits perfectly within SpaceX's larger vision of fully reusable end-to-end -end system that can take humans from Earth to the Moon Mars and beyond. If realized, this would mark a turning point, not just for Artemis, but for the future of human space exploration itself. Of course, simplification isn't just changing how the mission operates, it's transforming the design of the vehicle itself. That philosophy becomes clear the moment you look at the latest Starship human landing system renderings. The new design feels more refined, more deliberate, and unmistakably focused on function. The crew compartment now follows a cleaner, more uniform structure. The number of windows has been reduced just enough for astronauts to observe their surroundings, but not so many that they compromise safety or strength. Fewer windows mean better structural integrity, improved thermal protection, and more privacy for the crew. It's a careful balance between practicality and comfort, the kind of design thinking that defines long-duration missions in deep space. Inside, the simplification continues. The Starship HLS cabin now integrates its major systems, life support, avionics, communications, environmental controls, and crew accommodations into a single flight-ready module. This streamlined approach reduces the need for heavy modifications or add-on hardware making the vehicle more efficient and easier to prepare for lunar flight. SpaceX is already building a flight article Starship HLS cabin, a real physical prototype that will be used for full-scale system tests and astronaut training. It's not just a model, it's a working unit that brings SpaceX one step closer to operational readiness. Earlier concepts showed a two-floor design compact, but often criticized for being too tight for long-term habitation. The new version changes that completely. The interior feels open and functional, with expanded workspace dedicated living areas and even a balcony-style observation deck offering a panoramic view through the side windows. A centrally placed staircase connects the decks, allowing astronauts to move smoothly between levels improving efficiency and comfort during operations. Even the access systems have been simplified. The crew hatch now aligns perfectly with the lunar elevator the platform astronauts will use to reach the surface. Its dimensions match the airlock, streamlining how astronauts and equipment move in and out of the ship. It's a smart, purposeful redesign that enhances safety and flow. But it also hints at something bigger. Seen horizontally, that same door could serve as the entryway to a future lunar habitat, a glimpse of how Starship might evolve into a permanent base on the moon. And then, there are the landing legs, perhaps the clearest example of how simplicity and engineering can coexist. Early Starship prototypes had intricate folding leg assemblies, impressive to look at, but difficult to build and maintain. Later versions switched to fixed legs, solving some problems, but introducing others like limited flexibility for stacking or landing on uneven ground. Now SpaceX seems to have found the right balance. The latest design uses a folding mechanism inspired by the Falcon 9, proven reliable and now adapted for the lunar environment. These legs deploy from the lower section of the ship, keeping Starship closer to the ground for better stability on rugged terrain. They may even include a spring or shock absorption system to soften landings on the moon's unpredictable surface. It's a simple yet brilliant evolution, reducing complexity while boosting reliability. Every adjustment, every redesign brings Starship closer to one goal, making lunar missions not just possible, but practical, repeatable, and ready for the next giant leap. So now we've thought out of the box. We know what a simplified Artemis architecture could look like. 
But while we wait for political gears to turn, and maybe for a Trump administration to bring Jared Isaacman back into the picture to push that vision forward, it's worth asking, why is the current Artemis program such a mess in the first place? Dr. Robert Zubrin, the founder of the Mars Society, has never been shy about his opinions. And in an interview with his own organization's YouTube channel, he didn't hold back. His words were blunt. He called Artemis, quote, a mess. According to Zubrin, NASA operates in two very different modes. One is purpose-driven, the other is vendor-driven. And in his view, Apollo was absolutely the first kind. He explains that Apollo's goal wasn't primarily scientific. It was to prove a point. To show the world what free people could accomplish when united behind a common mission. Every dollar had a destination. The Saturn V. The Command Module. The Lunar Module. All parts of one seamless system engineered for one purpose to land on the moon and bring the crew home safely. Zubrin draws a comparison to NASA's Science Mission Directorate today. He says they don't design Mars rovers just to hand out contracts to parachute or airbag companies. Each mission has a reason, a goal, a scientific outcome. It's purposeful. Every decision serves that end. But Artemis Zubrin argues has lost that focus. It's become what he calls vendor-driven. In other words, instead of building the right tools for the mission, NASA's current approach builds the mission around the contracts, around the politics, around the companies that need to stay funded. The result, five major components, SLS Orion Gateway Starship and the so-called National Lander. On paper, it sounds impressive, but in reality, these parts were never designed to function as one unified system. And too often, they simply don't fit together. Take the Gateway Station. Former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden once proposed it instead of a lunar landing. But now it's been made mandatory. Instead of simplifying lunar missions, it adds more steps and more risk. With Gateway in the mix, a single moon mission could require as many as 14 Starship launches. Without it, only 10. Then there's the National Lander, a program born not from necessity but from disappointment. After losing the original lunar contract to SpaceX, several major aerospace players pushed NASA to fund a second lander. And NASA agreed. But there's one big problem it runs on hydrogen and oxygen. Starship uses methane and oxygen, which means they can't even refuel each other. And finally, there's SLS. Zubrin doesn't call it a bad rocket, far from it. But he does call it outdated. Its basic design traces all the way back to 1988, nearly 30 years before it even reached the launch pad. A rocket born from another era carrying all the weight of the past into a future that's already outpacing it.